the moment. Just about identical that times last time by. 64-6-1 for Evans, 64-6-6 for Cassidy. Work goes on under the engine cover for Jamie McNee. Let's not forget Kenny Smith, three-time New Zealand Grand Prix winner, back at 69 years of age. It's hard to believe he turns 70 next year. It is, especially when you look at Kenny. He races almost every weekend during the summer in either Formula 5000 or the Toyota Racing Series, and he freely admits these Toyota Racing Series cars are getting just a, a little bit too much for him. Once again, we see this fantastic shot on Daniel Kvyat's car just from the, the wheel there. And once again, you see this pickup as he goes down the back straight. He's approaching this turn at about 235, 240 kilometers an hour as he turns right around Dunlop. You see the pickup gradually build up on the inside of the, the tire again. Once it gets back on the flat, that pickup disappears, or primarily it disappears. So there is the young Russian. He's four seconds out of the points lead. Chasing down Mitch Evans and Nick Cassidy. And maybe Scott Pye maybe, uh, maybe Kivat. Maybe Kivat, is, is he dropping back a little bit here, Jamie, from Cassidy? I can't see Cassidy uh, in front of him on some of the onboards now. Maybe Cassidy and Evans are stretching their little lead a bit. Well, Kivet's he, only, he now did what? lose at four tenths to Mitch Evans, who just went 64-5 in that last lap. But, uh, yeah, four seconds. He certainly has dropped off in the last couple. I don't know if he's made a mistake. I think the Evans and Cassidy duo, their lap times are fairly consistent. It must have been Kvyat that dropped uh, dropped off a little bit. But he's still got uh, three seconds on Scott Pye behind him. And then Hill, Foster and Farnbacher in seventh. So Mitch Evans, the lead at the line last time was 0.8 of a second. He crosses the line. Lap 14, 0.8 of a second. He was half a tenth up on Nick Cassidy. But there's just nothing in this. And this is exactly what we saw last year with Evans and Earl Bamber. They were trading lap times, chasing each other down within one one hundredth of a second each lap. And, and Mitch Evans is an extremely experienced driver, as we've said, he, albeit with his young years. One would assume that he's just uh, just pacing this whole race together. There's some good old battles going on behind them, but they're not concerned with that. They're just getting a march on the rest of the field. And although it's only four seconds, Kvyat seems to have dropped off these two. Well, he lost another half second that last lap. He's dropped into the 105 bracket. Scott Pye making some gains on him as well. well we have a... Oh, some action further back, Alistair, Alistair Wooten. Wooten. He, he just must have damaged the front wing. He just lost the bonnet off the car, and he's, in fact, he's lost a lot off the and car. And Earl Bamber with rear wing damage on the Tissot number two. Well, Wooten was uh, just behind Bamber at the time, so maybe there was a... And Alex Lynn. Alex, Alex Lynn, Lynn has lost a rear left wheel by the looks of it. He's got right front suspension damage. Here's the peak antifreeze replay. Alex Wooten. Lynn trying it up the inside getting un underneath Wooten, who gets underneath Earl Bamber. Earl Bamber was the innocent party in that little uh, escapade, and I think maybe Wooten was a little bit innocent as well. That was about the ninth and tenth position. Will we see a safety car? Because Alex Lynn is stranded out on the racetrack with damaged right front suspension. It almost looked like Alistair Wooten got a little bit out of shape first. Alex Lynn sees the opportunity to go the inside of Wooten, and it was just sort of a concertina effect from there. The trouble there. is uh, Alistair Wooten then had nowhere to go outside of him apart from into Bamber, and that's exactly what he did. So that's off the exit of Higgins, and a safety car has been called as Alistair Wooten pits in the Radio Haraki machine. They just told him, get out of the car. I think they've looked at the brakes here. You can see the leak from the, from the front there is just leaking brake fluid. So, unfortunately, that's Alistair Wooten's day over. Uh, a racing incident, I think that is. It's a disappointment for another young Kiwi and the Lexus. If Sports Safety Car is out on the racetrack, don't go away. We'll be back with more from the 56th New Zealand Grand Prix after this break. Welcome back to Manfield as the New Zealand Grand Prix continues. There's lots of damage out on the racetrack, cars in the pits as well. And the reason for the safety car is this on the peak antifreeze replay. Looked like Alistair Wooten locked a brake. Alex Lynn went down the inside of him and Wooten's just got into the back of Bill Bamber who, as you said, was an innocent party Bob McMurray as we're back to green. The resumption of the 56th New Zealand Grand Prix. Nick Cassidy with a half dive down the inside. But Evans holds him off. Oh, that's Nick Foster just going a little bit wide there. 
We're back racing again, but Earl Bamba is still carrying the damage. Little collision. His rear wing is still askew, and I will hope. I hope that rear wing is very solidly on. Not if you continue to do that. He's just had another bump against Mario Farnbacher. Yeah, another one of the M2 competition cars and in there one. as Vamba runs wide off the exit. He's really struggling out the Tissot number two. Wow. You can see the chances of defending his New Zealand Grand Prix victory from a year ago. Fading fast. Here's the peak candy freeze replay. Farnbacher down the inside of Bamba. There's Jordan Skinner involved in that as well and just... Amber off the exit, up over the curbs, and there was a little bit of assistance there from the German. I think so, but I'm not sure that Mario Fumbach had anywhere to go. He was going around there at a speed. Uh, it's just unfortunate that Earl was still on his outside. But anyway, Mitch Evans continues to hold off Cassidy. Cassidy continues to try and look at Mitch Evans down the inside. No, that's not going to work there. Mitch shut the door very quickly. Oh, there's nothing in this. We are over the halfway mark. Daniel Kievet trying to stay with the two young Kiwis off this restart. Now, with their racing together like that up ahead of him, Kvyat must be thinking, OK, boys, you're going to make a mistake here. Somebody's going to make a mistake as Cassidy tries the inside, locks up a brake on the left-hand side. He was lucky he didn't repeat the uh, the accident there earlier. Well, it's cost him momentum. It cost him two car, car lengths off the exit of the hairpin. Advantage back to Mitch Evans. But, boy, this is just nail-biting stuff. And the New Zealand Grand Prix serves this up every year. <laughs> It does. These are desperate young men. Desperate is not the right word. These are excited young men racing for the biggest prize in New Zealand motorsport and try racing to get their name on that trophy with the likes of Sterling Moss, Jack Brabham, John Surtees, McLaren. You go through them all. They were all, all on that trophy. Yeah, Chris Eamon, of course, he's here this weekend. And we have uh, the orange spot flag there for somebody. Somebody has some mechanical damage or wants to be brought be into the pits. Probably Bamba, Bamba for that rear wing if he's still going around. Right, so Evans' last lap was a 64.8. Cassidy is 64.9. Kievat was a 65.2. So again, it's just the two young Kiwis out in front in the 64 second bracket. Here's Josh Hilly still in that fifth position. Break lock up and behind from Nick Foster. And we're on about... 15 laps to go. Now these guys realize that whatever they're going to do, they're going to have to do it. And here we see Earl Bamba. He thinks his race is done. The rear wing is definitely askew. You can't fix that in, in a matter of moments. So uh, his race is done for the afternoon. He is not going to win this Grand Prix. So Mitch Evans, Nick Cassidy, just half a second apart. Trading fastest lap times. Mitch Evans will go quicker one lap. Cassidy will go quicker the next. Looks like Evans has just strung out a tiny, tiny lead on Cassidy. Just four tenths of a second. Another 1.6 seconds back to Daniel Kvyat. So Daniel is just losing them again like he did in the first portion of this race before the Lexus ISF did a few laps in front. Yeah, Scott Pye is only a half a second behind the Russian. Climbing the curves through the S's. Once again, Cassidy seems to catch up around the bendy bits there. He's got a slightly faster car, I think, uh, around the infield. It's been set up maybe for the infield, whereas perhaps Mitch Evans' car has been set up for the straights and for the long sweepers on turn seven and turn eight. So the change is for that to make the car faster on the straight. You flatten the wings out, the wing elements? Yep, you do exactly that. If you want the car to go really fast down the straight, you take the wing off completely. Of course, then you're going to have a real problem going around the bendy bits. So you want it to go fast around the bendy bits, you put the wing on. It's like a parachute down the straight. And this is the challenge of setting up a car with wings and slicks. You've got to worry about the mechanical setup as well as the aerodynamic setup. And this is what teaches these young drivers to go overseas and do it on the bigger cars of three and a half litre, and maybe even Formula One for a couple of these guys. So again, the last lap, Evans went quicker than Cassidy. This lap just gone, Cassidy was a tenth of a second quicker than Mitch Evans. And in turn, Scott Pye was marginally quicker than uh, Daniel Kiervet. Was so we're back on board the third place Russian. It looks like Scott Pye is coming, in, his car is coming towards him a little bit here. He's just getting a bit quicker. He's very close with Daniel Kiervet. Scott Pye has thoroughly enjoyed his racing so far. He says most of these short races are like 10 or 12 or 15 lap qualifying sessions, and he has a great beaming smile on his face when he gets out of the car. Maybe this longer one is going to suit him even better. Another great shot from Kvyat's car now. 
Will we see Scott Pike close up under braking here? Is Kivet having a little problem? We've seen him get a bit loose under braking and going into turns now and again. Well, Scott Pike, he's not too far away. Mitch Evans has just ducked back into the 64.5 second bracket. He was two tenths of a second quicker than Cassidy, but still not a lot in this race. Evans cannot afford to make a mistake. And behind Scott Pye, the uh, Josh Hill and Nick Foster battle is pretty close as well. They, they look like they're keen on getting in front of each other desperately. Yeah, Foster was just a shade quicker than Hill in that last lap. Go back to Mario Farnbacher in seventh. Kataru Sakurai in the eighth position. Lukashevich in ninth and Jordan Skinner in tenth. 